be paid by the state. Right. But see, this is not this is not a mining program okay. that they're saying it is. But um, we cannot be paid to do any of the programs. It's illegal. That that's our policy. So uh, I there was someone who had been working in mining for probably forty years, and she was referring to a sports specialist, and she desperately needed income. And so I this was the first one in the uni United States. I worked out a memorandum of agreement, mm -hmm. a legal document. Mm -hmm. They're paid through the extra mile. The state gives the money through extra mile to pay people to work for the sports specialist mm -hmm. in various places. And Okay. And, I, and I won't discuss that in this one because okay. that's outside of okay. mining, but yeah. I did connect with them so they could do that. This is something that I think is very important. I think that this is something that we do kind of on our own. That would be wonderful. You know, you know, you know why? Because, um, I mean, you know, up until we came here, I, I was actually So many of us having having a uh, uh, a family member, somebody one in four, yeah, right. Right. not that the other three, right? Could be and the mm -hmm. stories mm -hmm. of the mentally ill, mm -hmm. when they get to tell their whole story, mm -hmm. it blows people away. Mm -hmm. well they people never that imagined that, yeah. that somebody mm -hmm. lived that kind of life. I mean, I'm telling you, the family members and the people with mental illness are some of the they keep on going and telling, and most all of them that I know have faith. Mm -hmm. yeah, faith That's a uh, very that's strong very thread of faith. Yeah, that's that's right. Okay, no problem. Is that better? Okay, okay, you ready? Yeah, you ready to uh, call it Joe Kate? Push your line right now. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Game Changer Show. We are Charles. We are Charles and Janet Jackson, and we are shooting live once again from the X House. So tonight we have guests, as you can see, um, and before we introduce them, we would just want to go ahead and get our general information out of the way. Um, Y'all know that we've been doing a series uh, that's just been incredible, been life-changing. You know, we've been having people to call us, you know, to tell us how they have really uh, enjoyed this season, this word on condemnation and quiet confidence. Well, we started out with quiet confidence and we moved into condemnation because so many people walk around uh, condemned and never, ever, ever experience having that quiet confidence with God. And we find that very uh, uh, pro pro prolific in our uh, community where we live. We, we have people that go through things mentally, uh, spiritually, 
and tonight we have our guests here and they're going to address some of the mental challenges that people have that keeps them bound in their mind, keeps them walking in that condemnation that they don't even know how to get in a place to be quiet, have that quiet confidence or that assurance with God. So without further ado, I'm going to just let my husband um, just review uh, uh, for a little while so we can kind of catch back up where we left off at. And then we're going to go into a very interesting and detailed conversation. If you know anybody, if you have anyone that you love that have suffered or is suffering or are dealing with, I don't want to uh, put the wrong stigma on this uh, uh, situation, please call them. Have them to tune in to the show tonight. These are professionals. They know what they're talking about. If you have relatives, it's coming up to the holiday season, so you know they're all going to be coming together, all the family. You need to know how to deal with it. You need to know how to approach them in love, you know, without that condemnation. You know, we, we, we want to use this season to embrace those that we love that are struggling in their heart, in their heart with condemnation. So, honey, I'm just going to turn it over to you. Welcome to the show. We've been... We've been uh, learn, doing reruns here for probably a couple of weeks. And uh, it's, it's basically mostly because we've had such a tremendous schedule this mm -hmm. season, this fall season. And, um, and we want to stay on track. But more than staying on track, we want to make sure that we're being effective, that we're being kingdom, that we're being available in this time, in this season, in this trying time, because for some people, you know, um, some people are really having a tough time right now. It, mm -hmm. it, 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 for some of us, it's hard to believe, but some of us are really having a hard time. Really, really having a hard time. Um, something else I wanted to mention. Okay, let's not forget. We we didn't we didn't mention this at the first part of the show. But I wanted to mention it. Part of the show, you know, um, this Saturday, this Saturday in uh, Putnam Park, uh, it's our fifth annual, it's the sixth it's annual, sixth annual um, Thanksgiving Day, Day of, Day of Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for uh, homeless, and for the last couple of years we've been doing it for the homeless and for flood victims. Thank God we we don't have to include the flood victims this year, yeah. but we are still going to be in full force. Um, in Putnam Park, I think it's going to be from uh, eleven to three. three, like like it always is. And uh, you know, if you want to volunteer, you can call Lisa at uh, Lighthouse Family Church. At um, we'll have that number for you before the end of the show. But I don't remember it off the top of my head. It's been a while since I've had to call. It. Uh, but we will definitely be there in full force. Don't forget, you know, um, you, if you have any donations, tomorrow, tomorrow evening, um, well, probably tomorrow, I'd say probably tomorrow before lunch, if we're still doing it the way that we we have, 1300 Bertrand uh, in, the, in the breezeway on the side of the church. That will be the right-hand side of uh, the right-hand side when you pull in the driveway or pull into the parking lot on the right side, that breeze went on they the right They have a big side. sign outside. Yeah, they should have a big sign. They should have uh, the crates or the carts or the box, a big box where they're collecting the donations. So if you have any donations, you know, uh, items that you think homeless people could use, you know, and especially in this in this uh, winter season, it's 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 colder. It started getting colder this year than it, than it has for the past few years. We're running behind mm -hmm. in food items like... Okay. Um, Canned goods, the, mm -hmm. the pop tops. That, mm -hmm. You know, you, you if you give them the other kind of cans, they don't need a can opener. Right. <coughs> like, um, I think they like the peanut butter and vanilla mm -hmm. sausages and sardines and right. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. pop tarts and mm -hmm. yes, anything that's yes. non-perishable. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Anything yes. that's non-perishable. Of course, toiletry. Of course, toiletry. The type of toiletry that all this person. To, to carry around with them, you know, um, uh, thermals, 
uh, gloves, coats, you know, just anything, anything and everything that you think that a homeless person or a person that's low income, you know, it's it's sad enough to say, but there are, you know, I'm, I'm telling you, we, we, we were probably a month and a half or maybe a month into the fall season and I mean, I've already, I've already talked to probably four or five people that, that who don't have gas in their house. They have small children. They have to use one or two electric heaters, which is so inadequate. You know, you don't have gas. You don't have hot water to take mm -hmm. baths. You don't have hot water to cook. You know, I mean, this is just, for some people, this is a tough season. But we know God is still on the throne, and that this is part of it. I want to use that to introduce the series that we've been doing as we talk about quiet confidence. You know, if there is any single thing, if there is one single thing that we could all, or that we should all be able to agree on as it relates to the things of God, is that God is interested in, in those who believe. You know, if you're going to get something from God, it's only because you want to believe. Anything that you will ever get from the kingdom of God, it's only because you believe. Amen. You know, so so if, if belief is the currency of the kingdom, quiet confidence is billionaire status. Okay? If, 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 if belief is the Currency of the kingdom. If belief is the currency of the kingdom, quiet confidence is billionaire status. So, think about that. Think about that. And you know, we we've been through the various teachings uh, concerning this, but you know, really want to impress upon you. You know the thing that you do that you're so confident about. It's just like, just like uh, Sister Karen right now. She is she is very confident that she knows she knows the information that she's about to share. She don't have to hit Steve and say, "Give me my notes." You don't have to hit Steve and say, "Whisper to me." No, she doesn't. She doesn't. She doesn't. She doesn't. She is very confident in what she knows. Very very confident. Well, see that's that's. A, an example of the level of confidence God wants us to have in the thing concerning Him. Absolutely. He wants us to have, He wants us to be confident concerning the, the things uh, revolving the kingdom, things revolving our salvation, things revolving His promises, things revolving our life and, and having it more abundant. You know? So, so, so what does, what does quiet confidence to do with anything. Well, you know, for the for the for the for the for the past few weeks, I've given several examples, but I would like to give another example. You know, quiet confidence. Quiet confidence. What what would that look like practically? What well, that looks like that one thing that you've done all your life. That it's passed through all the stages of learning, you know, you know, the the the, uh, the curiosity, you know, the information being shared, you know, the information being disseminated, and then now the information being used in some way to get some experiential knowledge from it, you know, mm -hmm. and then now afterward, on the other side of that, you have a little wisdom, you have a little wisdom concerning that, right? Well, well, quite confident. Usually comes from a relationship that you have with God, where you have to be dependent. Mm -hmm. Okay, where you had to, where you've been in a tight, mm -hmm. and this time He came through, and boy, and then the next one was almost twice as bad, and then right at that last moment He comes, He swooped mm -hmm. you up again. Okay. And then that last time, this time it wasn't you, it was the children. But you know what? He showed up again. The, you know what? The next time, it was the job. He showed up again. Well, you know what? 
how many of us know that if he can he if he gets a resume like that what <laughs> it's gonna be hard for you to try it's it's gonna be hard for you to try and cause <laughs> doubt or disbelief to enter into my heart. It's gonna be and so mm-hmm. with some of us, with some of us, it's a call to say, let me bring my mind in mm-hmm. and let me let me cause it to be engaged in what's happening. So when he comes mm-hmm. through, I can remember it. Some, some of, for some of us that call the quiet confidence, that's what that is. For some of us, it's an explanation of really what's required of me to be a kingdom citizen. You know, for some of us, you know what? It's a shit. Wake up. Don't you remember what he did the last time? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> huh? Don't you remember what he did the last time? And so, today, you know, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time well, in the sea reading, but I just wanted to encourage you with these words to let you know the quiet confidence, the muscle that quiet confidence uses, you already have. Mm-hmm. And it's already built up. Mm-hmm. It's already strong. See? Because God has designed us in such a way that we literally live from what we believe in. See? Mm-hmm. So so watch this. So the quiet confidence you need to have in God is the same level of confidence you have in the thing that you you know that 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 you know the confidence that we have in God should be built on the confidence that we have from having a relationship. So tonight, just a little short encouragement. As we walk to the big house of God. Ah. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And um um and and really just um, just become more and more familiar with an aspect of our community. Most of us see it every day and don't recognize it. And it's it's a growing community. It's a growing community. And, and some of it is being induced by, you know, street drugs and that kind of thing. But some of it is just life. You know, some of it is just living life. And so tonight, let's get a little bit informed. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to have, uh, this is not going to be the only show that we have concerning this. So mm-hmm. if you, that knowing that you're ahead of time, that you're really going to enjoy the show, mm-hmm. pay close attention to the next show that we have, because this one's going to be kind of awkward, because we kind of, we, we fellowship and we kind of say, oh, we really need to do this. And we did it. <laughs> but the next time, I think we'll be more deliberate. We'll probably be more precise. We'll probably be more deliberate and more focused in on what we talk about, you know. But um, the way that I would like to introduce this to, the, to our listeners or to our viewers is, you know, um, now is the National Association of mm-hmm. Mid- what, It's a national I alliance, huh? I introduce it. Okay. <laughs> what, well, what is it? Y'all well, call well, somebody. No, 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 no. Let, yeah. us, let her introduce it. Yeah. I thought you were yeah. going to introduce it in the yeah. intro. Mm-mm. But go ahead. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Well, 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 for no, go ahead. It's I a national say. alliance on mental awareness or mental, right. illness. Or mental illness. illness. Yeah. National awareness on mental illness. Now, I've had a relationship with NAMI probably for... Uh, four plus years, you know, yeah. But um, I think I think our the relationship, the functional relationship that we had, I think started when we were when we became a part of the coalition again, the, the co- coalition for mental awareness or for mental health. That um, what was it, the sheriff's office? Yes, it's a uh, uh, criminal justice mental yeah. health coalition between law enforcement agencies Mm -hmm. and um, a lot of other community agencies, but uh, NAMI Acadiana has been a big part of that. Uh, Right. 
pulling yeah. in other agencies that would have to do with that, related to that. Mm -hmm. Well, let's tell them uh, who they are. I was just, I was, I'm just going to finish my statement. Okay. Uh, and and which, which was, that was our, our real first functional uh, interaction with one another mm -hmm. as it relates to both having concern with respect to what they do professionally, you know, and what, and, and a part of where our heart is. See, um, that's, that's one thing about Christianity that I still, still, uh, I'm looking for an avenue to be able to introduce it in that way. You know, and I say this, I always say this, you know, Christianity needs to take on the level of involvement that Islam, and I'm not praising Islam, I'm not advocating Islam, but I tell you what, Islam, if you're really, really an Islamic person, Islam touches every aspect of your life. It's the government, it's the, it's the bus you ride to work, you know, it's, it's on your job, it's, it's the, it's, it's, it's your medication, it's your doctor, it's your physician, it's in every aspect of their life, isn't it? Well, that's the way Christianity is. It's not, and we sometimes try and present it like it is, mm -hmm. but really, honestly and truly, if it was, we would have a very, very good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Amen. now, without any further delays, we are introducing Steve and, um, why did I just Karen. Say Karen Dubois of NAMI of Acadia. And, um, have it. Well, what I want to say is that Miss Karen, she is the program and education director, her and her husband, for NAMI. They, they are board members, they co-teach and facilitate all of these classes, support groups, mm -hmm. these are the people that you want to connect with if you have someone that's dealing with this. So tell us about NAMI, what it is, and a little background uh, okay. to get us started. NAMI uh, is a grassroots organization dedicated to improving the lives of people who have a mental illness and their families. And uh, NAMI has been in existence uh, for over 30 years. We are all over the United States, and we are in other countries uh, also, we're proud to say. So if someone, uh, say for instance, goes to Mexico, we do have uh, NAMI affiliates there. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not just presented just to a, a select group of people in the United States. It touches a lot of people. Italy, we have... Yes, all over the world. Have, I was uh, looking at it, yeah. Uh, and this is very important because mental illness is part of the human condition universally. Mm -hmm. If you do studies in Britain, if you do them in Egypt, if you do them in China, the statistics on mental illness are the same. Mm. It's, it's the human condition. We all um, have some genetic health risk and it is largely genetic. Mm -hmm. It has environmental triggers right. that might um, bring it uh, into manifestation. But let me just say, everyone is born with some genetic health risk. Mm -hmm. Passed down DNA mm -hmm. in the family. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that you will have whatever that is, whether it be diabetes or uh, heart disease. Mm -hmm. uh, you're wise to know what uh, the genetic component can be in your family for certain diseases. That doesn't mean that you will have it. That means there is a risk. Mm -hmm. So it's always, with any uh, health risk, wise to know what that is and about it. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is help people to understand that mental illness is not somebody's fault. There should not be guilt. There should not be blame. And most of all, there should not be shame or stigma. It is a medical, biological, physical illness of the brain. Treatment does work. 
getting the right treatment and the right therapy does work, which usually involves medications, but it also involves support. Absolutely. No one um, can do this by themselves. Um, and most of the time, when someone has an illness, say cancer, you have support, the love and support of family Empathy. members, uh, the church, neighbors, mm -hmm. everyone has empathy. And very often they can't do enough for you. Mm -hmm. Loving and supportive. When it comes to mental illness, because people do not understand mental illness, what it is and what it is not, they're afraid of it. They don't want to talk about it. It used to be that way with cancer. Right. Now we understand what it is. And, and it's not something that you um, hide anymore. Right. Because you know that people, other people understand it. Mm -hmm. Not the same with mental illness. The support mm -hmm. is not there because people are afraid to associate no, right. with someone who mm -hmm. has it or mm -hmm. looks at a family when um, someone finds out that a loved one in their family has mental illness and they back away. We, we don't understand that. I, we're afraid of that. And um, consequently, um, we think that there's some blame to place and there's something wrong with your family. That would not happen in my family. There must be something mm -hmm. wrong with your family. Now, what I want to say is this is a universal condition. I personally believe it's in every family. It's just, it's a human condition. And the fact is, there is treatment for it. If a person, again, cannot do this by themselves, they need people around them to help them to get the right treatment, to help them to get into recovery. And I do want to say that over all these things that we do, that we practice, that Steve and I do, everything has to be covered with compassion and love. Absolutely. People that have mental illness are very often afraid. They're afraid of other people. They try to hide their illness, and sometimes they can't hide it. And they desperately need help, but they need the kind of help that they aren't afraid of. We don't want them to fear getting treatment. We want them to know that others are helping them to get treatment because they love them. You have to cover everything with compassion and love. Uh, it's just uh, one of those things that makes everything flow so much better. Mm -hmm. Understanding, no condemnation. That's right. right. Yeah, Judgmental. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, that's really what we see so much of now is people being judgmental about mm -hmm. someone that has uh, a mental illness. It is a biological, physical illness like mm -hmm. any other medical illness. This is a medical illness that needs medical treatment. Mm -hmm. And above all of that, we have to remember that these are people. These are people, just like we are. And they, everybody needs love, everybody needs friendship, everybody needs to know that someone cares. Mm -hmm. And over all of this that we do, we care. It's because we care. Um, we have um, a 12-week family to family class that my husband and I teach. It's an education class for family members. We have found um, most of the time you start with the family and educate the family first to understand yes. mm -hmm. so that that person has mm -hmm. positive support in helping that person to get the treatment mm -hmm. that they need. Um, then probably the next step would be getting um, their loved one into uh, treatment one. Mm -hmm so that they can find a little bit of stability and start thinking a little clearer. Mm -hmm. Then you want to get them into one of our support groups. We have Connection Recovery Support Group, which mm -hmm. is for someone who has a mental illness. Um, they will be surrounded by people just like them, who many of whom have been rejected by society. Absolutely. They'll find a lot of love there. And everything's confidential, and we also have a family support group. 
And so those uh, two groups meet at the same time, just across the hall from each other, mm -hmm. the first and third Sundays of each month at First Lutheran Church mm -hmm. from 6 to 7.30. Let's say that so they can hear you. Okay. First and third Sundays at uh, First, first Lutheran, Lutheran Church, Church, which is right behind Cole's department store, from 6 to 7.30. You don't have to register. You don't have to tell anybody you're coming. We are delighted to have people just walk in. Everybody that facilitates these groups that is trained, and we are nationally trained. We go through state training, but this comes from our national organization. Um, we are certified to do what we do. But to do what we do, say for the Connection Recovery Support Group, those facilitators have to be someone who is in recovery with a mental illness. So they walk in the same right. shoes as the people mm. that come into that group. Absolutely. That's authentic. Mm. That is, I understand mm. because mm -hmm. I live what you live. Mm. Right. And by the same token for this family uh, programs, uh, you have to be a family member mm. who lives that, who has someone in their family that has mental illness. Let's talk about that. that that's serious. The family support. You yes. know, I was talking to uh, your husband some time ago we had uh, was at a function together and uh, he said sit down here and let me talk to you he said do you realize most people that uh, have a mental illness they family don't even know how to deal with it they don't they don't even try to deal with it really they try to hide from it you know and it's, true. it's mostly in our culture it's mostly going on in our uh, African American black culture, whichever one you want to call yourself, and we, it's time for us to be educated. So tell us, you know, we're experiencing it in ourselves. You know, uh, my husband have a testimony concerning it. I have, we have a testimony concerning it, and it's just time that we face these situations that when, when those loved ones that we have, when they have these. Uh, uh, I don't know what you call them, these moments where they don't know how, quite know how to wrap their minds around it. How do the family members, she's going to tell us how the family members can deal with it. Now, you heard her say there's a support group, and I've been promising that I was going to start coming on first and third, and we're going to put the nail in the coffin, you know, um, Sundays, because it's real important. A lot of the people that we minister to, you know, uh, yes. And so we just gonna keep, this, this is gonna be a good show. Y'all call somebody, you know, uh, mm -hmm. tell them to tune in because this is serious, this is serious. And uh, during the holidays, a lot of them, it, we're gonna talk about all that, but tell us how the family members should handle them um, when they going through these different situations. There's so much um, that family members feel. I'm embarrassed. I don't understand why they're acting like this. Angry. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay, Angry. what, let's fix that behavior. Okay, the behaviors that you see are just symptoms. Bleeding is a symptom of a wound. Swelling is a mm -hmm. symptom of something. These behaviors are only symptoms. That's not the illness. Mm -hmm. The illness is in the physiology of the brain. There right. may be brain damage, there may have been damage before birth. Uh, there's so many different causes. And yes, um, that synthetic marijuana uh, yes, it can damage the brain. Absolutely. And by the way, I would be willing to say that a large percentage, very large percentage of uh, drug use, abuse of substances is driven by a mental illness. They're just trying to self-medicate and kill the pain. And they are in pain, mm -hmm. both mental and physical. And they know no other way to deal with it because they don't understand what this is that's causing them to act or feel this way. Mm -hmm. They themselves know something's wrong. Even those that are in denial about the illness, and that can be uh, physiological, a uh, phenomenon called anosognosia, where the area of the brain that Say has that to do... Say that word again for me, Anosognosia means 
the part of the brain uh -huh. that has to do with insight, right. recognizing things, yeah, is damaged. Right. Yeah, and it can have been from birth, and they cannot recognize that they're ill. Right. So the family right. members have to find a way to get them the help that they need. I want to tell you, I have never met anyone with mental illness mm -hmm. who is not highly intelligent mm -hmm. and very talented. Mm -hmm. We cannot afford to lose these people. They're wonderful. Mm -hmm. They are wonderful. Mm -hmm. So many are brilliant. They need help mm -hmm. to be able to have a stable life, to lead um, a useful citizen's life in this country. Mm -hmm. And we're losing people that no telling what these people could have accomplished if mm -hmm. they'd gotten the help that they needed. It's so heartbreaking to see uh, people that could do so much for our society if they just got the help that they needed mm -hmm. to lead a stable life. They can lead a good life. We've got some people that are absolutely amazing absolutely people ugly. that have gotten the help. Uh, we have uh, one of our NAMI people um, has schizophrenia. And um, after he um, came in contact with NAMI and took advantage of what we have to offer, this man has written, I think, uh, 11 or 12 books. He's a, um, he's a weightlifter. <laughs> he's won, he's won medals all over the United States. Um, he, has a tel he has a television show. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, comes on right behind him. This, this, this is what I'm saying. <laughs> yes. These people are valuable. Phenomenal. These are amazing people, mm -hmm. and we can't afford to lose these mm -hmm. people. We're losing so much mm -hmm. talent. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So that, that being the concern, mm -hmm. uh, family members also, the grief yes. that they have in seeing someone that they love, maybe a son Absolutely. or a daughter, is heartrending, especially when they feel like they can't talk to anybody else about it. Mm -hmm. Can't talk to the neighbors, can't talk to the rest of the extended family, mm -hmm. certainly not at church. Not okay. in the body of Christ. Oh. Don't sweep that under the rug. We don't want anybody to talk about that. I can tell you. Here's pastors. I can tell you this. Right. Our daughter, uh -huh. our daughter would not be alive today if it were not for uh, some church friends that we uh, have known for 32 years mm -hmm. who had mental illness in their family. And they watched our daughter and uh, the mother of the family came to me and said, do you understand that your daughter is seriously depressed and is dangerous? Would you mind if we intervened and took her to the mental health hospital? And I'm like, I don't know what to do. They took her. Hmm? We didn't know. We didn't know. We, we yeah, didn't yeah. understand it. They did, and they intervened. And I can't tell you how grateful we are to such loving people and their very close friends to this day, and they still work in NAMI. And we have to be that for other people. We have to be the ones that are uh, waiting to hold out a hand and say, we care about you. And you are worth, you are worth it. You are worth it. We, um, we do have to do a lot of work as far as our mental health system. It's sadly broken. There's not sadly enough broken. services. And we advocate at the national level, at the state level, and at the local level. And I'm, I'm really proud of the uh, Criminal Justice Mental Health Coalition that uh, we work with, uh, with all the law enforcement agencies. Um, some of the uh, things that we are concerned with is um, educating all law enforcement officers to understand what they need to do in approaching someone that has mental illness. It's called crisis intervention training. And uh, we've been in a lot of the classes with them, uh, speaking to them. It is an extremely important training for law enforcement uh, mm -hmm. officers. Instead of approaching, yeah. uh, instead of approaching the situation, mm -hmm. as officers are trained, yeah. to take control of the situation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they're um, taught to um, be aggressive, mm -hmm. 
you know, establish this um, authority. Well, when it comes to someone that has mental illness, they are already afraid of people. Yes. And that situation can escalate. Yeah, the lights and, and the, all the other stuff. The, well, the first thing, you know, if an officer's got his hand on his gun and that person's already afraid, they're going to fight because they're afraid. Paranoia is rampant in a lot of the mental illnesses. They don't trust anybody. They're afraid. The thing is, is that most of them are afraid and we don't understand that. They're afraid. Right. So we teach um, law enforcement officers how to approach them in a very calm, non-threatening manner, you know, calm voice, uh, slowly, uh, in a non-threatening manner to de-escalate the situation. And uh, what we want to do is get them to a uh, hospital where they can get treatment. We don't, we don't want to take them to jail. That's not going to solve any problems mm -hmm. at all. It's going to exacerbate the problems. And we have a big push as far as getting the homeless off the street. Uh, so many are, are mentally ill, and that's why they're on the street. Or in jail. And getting, getting them the help that they need so that, one, they can uh, get treatment, housing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, don't give them a handout. Give them a hand up. Mm -hmm. Help yeah, them yeah. truly. Okay. to uh, get treatment so that they can work, mm -hmm. help them to get work. Right. They deserve that. But what is it, I mean, what does family do when they, they're not uh, functional on a job? You know, they may be right. able to pull themselves together to get the interview and you may be able to get through, they may be able to get through by maybe the first week or two of work right. and then they have this uh, mental break now I, I I know of a young lady that's walking around with this um, this stigma on her now because you know she's been yeah. to Walmart she's been all over town and every almost every job that she's been on you know it she have this mental break right on the job there so, can be a lot of stress in jobs and stress is the number one trigger stress mm -hmm. any kind of stress at the holidays you mentioned that the holidays are hyped up mm -hmm. everybody can be excited everybody's busy we have lots of family gatherings right that's good stress now, I mean that's good trigger, that's right. good stress. that's right. good stress yeah, that's we good. enjoy the festivity but for them exactly. it's stress and that's why things go south so badly that's why they disappear. so many family gatherings during the holidays mm -hmm. A lot of the, um, uh, a lot of our mentally ill in the winter months when there's less sunlight suffer from seasonal affective disorder, they call it something else now, but a, a less sunlight and it causes depression. There, they, they, it causes depression, less sunlight. Sunlight, less sunlight. Seasonal yeah. affective disorder. Seasonal that beautiful sunlight, disorder. if there's less of it, it causes depression and conversely, in the summer months when you have that bright sunlight, mm -hmm. if someone has bipolar disorder, it can kick them on over into mania. We always right. tell our daughter, isn't this, those I mean, sunglasses isn't this fascinating? Yeah. 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 But well, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want, I want everybody to hear this. Say what you just said again. Uh, the lack of sunlight in the uh, winter months can cause depression. In the summer months, with the um, bright summer sunlight, it can kick someone on over into mania if they have bipolar disorder. And uh, one of the things that we have, simple thing that we found is effective for someone is sunglasses. Wow. So put them on Never go outside in the sun. without the sun, it, it, yeah. it makes a difference. Okay. I mean, it's, I yeah, there are so many things that, that we can all do to help. The best scenario for someone who has a mental illness is a calm Happy environment, mm -hmm. calm environment, mm -hmm. peaceful, mm -hmm. 
that helps them to maintain stability when things are up and down or chaotic and we know today there's a lot of uneasiness today and a lot of chaos and people are very unsure what's going to happen and uh, when people are unsure they're um, short-tempered uh, yeah agitated easily and you know um, when, when you're unsure about what's happening in your life, uh, family life can be chaotic. Mm -hmm. So uh, if we understand the dynamics, mm -hmm. we can help each other. Um, and as I said, I'm, I'm gonna continue to say this, we have to have compassion for each other. We mm -hmm. have to have empathy for each mm -hmm. other. We have to love each other. Now, what would you say to a person uh, our, our family members, I probably could turn it our family members, <laughs> maybe it didn't die, you know, <laughs> yeah, what, 42 minutes, yeah, probably need to go check on it. But what would you say to a family member that um, how, uh, uh, what would you say to family members that have mm -hmm. someone in their family and you want to help them, but you don't know how. Exactly. You know, you don't know how to help them. That's why and we're then, here. And, yes. Yeah, the key yes. word here, yes. folks. Yes, that's why yes. we're Education. It's education. Right. Okay, okay and I'm learning first, a lot. But first. I'm learning a lot. My name is Karen Dubois, and my number is 337-654-2138. Say that again. 337 654 Two one three eight. It's on all of our literature. Anyone can call me at any time. I will take their call. It can be someone who has mental illness. I talk to a lot of people who are struggling with that and are trying to find some avenue of help. And we're we're so happy to be able to make contact with them and they reach out and uh, off of what we have. And by sort of the same token, family members. Mm -hmm. um, by the time they call me, they're done. They're, they're used up, they've tried everything, nothing works, they've thrown all their money at it and it hasn't helped. And, you know, because there is such stigma about mental illness, you can imagine how far down someone ha would have to feel hopeless to call me and say, I, I need help. And sometimes my calls are an hour long, but that's okay because I can tell you this. Can you imagine how wonderful it is, this that I get to do? If I can restore hope in oh one goodness. phone call, there is hope for your loved one. You know, for a mother that is just grieving for their son or their daughter, a father who has said, I can't fix it, I've tried, I'm done. I just can't do this anymore. And then you talk to someone uh, that has mental illness, whose family has turned their back on them. And we, we have a NAMI family for them. But I will tell you that many, many, I've seen entire families turn around after getting educated I, what I like to think of it as, we help people to love each other again. And that's big in any family, mm -hmm. loving each other again. And it's learning to understand each other, particularly the family members that are horrified that their loved one, the ones in the families that are grieving that their sister or brother is seemingly uh, so mentally ill that they're losing them completely. Mm -hmm. uh, mothers and fathers, um, parents don't want to see any of their children uh, be lost. Right. And it's painful because it's like watching their loved one die it, it, in front it, it, of yeah. them. And that's excruciatingly yeah. painful for parents, especially. And it's especially pa um, uh, painful for those parents that have seen that loved ones soar or flourish. Yes. Then all of a sudden, you know, um, 
our daughter, like your daughter, we, we, we've dealt with this now, this is our third year. And I'm telling my husband, I'm saying, okay, you know, we, we got to get ourselves educated so we will know what to do. Because, you know, sometimes when those things happen to you, if you don't, you're not careful, you can catch a case. You, you know? can actually exacerbate the problem and do or say things that make it worse. Right. And trust me, right. I've been there because right. I've done that Absolutely. when I didn't understand. I right. said and did things that right. today just break my heart that because right. it made the whole situation so much worse. When you educate family members, it turns around their ability to be positive supports in that person's life. And by the same token, when that person gets treatment uh, and uh, gets the type of uh, treatment that does help in their recovery, and then they themselves get educated because there's a peer-to-peer -peer education class mm -hmm. for them, uh, when they get educated about their own illness, they mm -hmm. learn, you know, like somebody that gets diabetes, mm -hmm. they need to learn how to manage it. Absolutely. Same token, they need to understand their own mm -hmm. illness that is one of the biggest steps My to their God. recover that there is, educating themselves yeah. about their own illness. Yeah. Uh, we have So they just receive it and people say, oh, they crazy. And I mean, let's talk, it's real. Cause you're gonna be seeing these people on here cause it's real in our community, it's real in our homes, it's real in our churches. The churches don't want them in there. We know we actually had somebody tell us don't bring them back to their church no more, okay? So it is real and it's right in our face and we just just going right on like it's not a problem. It is a real problem that has just, uh, just like it's taken over, it's growing. So, so uh, you've been quiet. I want you to say something to the men that don't, uh, don't know what to do. They, they, maybe it's their wife or their son or their daughter or their mother or their father or whoever it is, that family member. And every year when they get together, it's the same uh, trigger. You know, it's that same trigger. And he doesn't know how to handle it because he don't know enough about what's going on with them. And we just label them crazy. So talk to the men, you know, because we women, we, we function different from what men, uh, how they function and how they see things. So I know it's a lot of men that, that would love to just hear what you have to say because you have lived it, you're living it, and you know what it's like. Janet, that's correct. Uh, mm -hmm. Gentlemen out there, uh, we're wired a little bit differently. Uh, we're not nurturing mothers or grandmothers like they are. Uh, mm -hmm. We're kind of wired to fix it. And when we can't fix it, and that's happened to me a lot in the past, mm -hmm. we kind of just stick our head in the sand. Uh, you know, we're supposed to be the high priest of our families. We're supposed to be leading our families in the right way. And if we can't be supportive of our spouse or the grandparents that are trying to be part of this restoration in our family, then we're not being a very good high priest at all. So we need to get educated about the symptoms and especially the behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately in this world today, we judge ourselves, we judge other people, especially by their behaviors. So if I'd been sitting here all night and doing a tick that I had, mm -hmm. you guys would say, what's wrong with that guy? Why is he on TV tonight? Mm -hmm. That may just be a symptom of my brain disorder. Mm -hmm. But until you educate yourself about my symptom and how I handle stress or whatever, so what was the breaking point for you with your daughter as, as the priest of your house? Okay. What was that breaking point? We're saying this is it. We got to do something different. I, I, I want to help you. Because I realize everybody is not uh, empathetic toward no, those people. Not. Men are not. Okay, come on, men talk to us. Until I got educated, I didn't know how to react to my daughter. She kept doing the same bad behavior over and over and over. And the last time that it happened was not long ago. And uh, I pretty much told her I was done with her, which is not what I should have said. Right. She and her brain thought that I had turned my back on her completely and had written her off. 
Now we have since been restored. She's been Amen. brought back. Praise so, Lord. Glory so, God. so you know, it's all about educating That's yourself. The beauty. And then as time grows, you learn more. When I asked my daughter 20 years ago, she's now 50, how are you doing today? How are you feeling? Oh, she told me, she looked at me dead on and said, Dad, I'm doing great today. I haven't never felt, felt this good in a long time. Never, never felt, felt this good better in my whole in my life. life. Well, I was okay. Well, tell your mom I'm going on to work, you know. Well, that was before I got educated. If she would tell me that after I got educated, that's a red flag. Oh, my God, that's a red flag. If she's telling me in the, after I learned about mania, and she told me that I've never felt better in my whole life, then I would have known automatically with my education that that means she's fixing to take off. Mm -hmm. And she's fixing to do full-blown mania. She's fixing mm -hmm. to throw those kids in the car and disappear. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so now, when I get that kind of response, you know what? I know what's yeah. going on. Yes. I know that, that's, yes. that she's at mm -hmm. the bottom, and she's like a NASA rocket fixing mm -hmm. to kick off in full When mania. you know what red flags to look for, you can you can step in and you can say, you know, I, I think maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's time we go back to the doctor, maybe your medication.